Ladies, it's your time to shine with all things fabulous with First for Women on Afternoon Express. For insurance with a host of fabulous benefits, call 0861 11 1844 or SMS FIRST to 49267. Good afternoon, South Africa. Very warm welcome once again to Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. It's a Friday. We're glad to be back in your space, in your homes. Thank you so much for allowing us. I'm Bonang Mateba. Of course, and I'm Bonnie Booty. Thank you so much for joining us. Today is a Friday, so it's all things fantastic fun. Mm, okay? Absolutely. We're anything looking, goes. Anything goes. <laughs> Let your hair down. Have lots of fun with us. There's so much to do with so little time. Talking about, I guess, one of South Africa's most loved couples in the loft with us yes, today. Yes, and they recently just won an award for yeah, best couple. Absolutely, mm -hmm. at the U Spectacular Awards. They are here today. Louisa and Jennifer Bala, so stick around for that. Yes, of course, and we're talking all the things that a girl loves. <laughs> Whimsical events, mm. diamonds, all things sparkly. All things sparkly. <laughs> Plus a brand new competition that we are launching today, courtesy with Revlon, is coming through a little bit later. But make sure that you chat with us, interact with us at Afternoon Chat on Twitter. And of course, use our official hashtag, Afternoon Express. And of course, we're not alone. No. Nope. We're with our handsome hunk, who's best utilized in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Danilo, what are you making Why, today? Why, thank you. I don't know if I should be offended or I should be grateful. Thank you so much, ladies. My name is Danilo Aquisto, and welcome to Afternoon Express. So today, joining us in the loft is none other than the not-so-low Fenty. You're quite tall, even when you're I'm sitting down. Good. I feel quite like... But you've got much better hair than me. Oh, well, thank you so much. If you just tilt your head down, we'll... I'm not going to do that. You'll find out later on. Also joining us in the kitchen today, we've got Claire Winstanley, who is our beautiful uh, uh, stylist in the, uh, food stylist in the kitchen today. What are we making? We are making the ultimate weekend brunch. I'm so excited about Yay. this recipe. It's a grilled cheese bake. So it's literally grilled cheese sandwiches in a tart or in a, a baking dish. Oh, Pour over that mm. typical f sort of French toast. Yes, yes, yes. And bacon. I'm imagining brown little pieces of toast with cheese and, and bacon. And pull I it out bacon. and munch on it. And with this bacon, we are very, very excited. Don't forget, you can cook along with us on Afternoon Express, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. Our recipes and the shopping list are available for you over there. Otherwise, if you want to chat to any of our guests and ask any kinds of questions, uh, you're welcome to go and find us on our social media sites too. Afternoon chat, hashtag Afternoon Express. We're on Instagram and Facebook too. But speaking about the awesome guests we have in our studio today, we're sitting with our first one on the couch. Thank you so much, Lilo. Very, very excited. We did intro them a little bit earlier on and we're happy to have them here. They recently won a Youth Spectacular Award for South Africa's Most Loved Couples and they are here today. Lo Yusobala and Jennifer, welcome to Afternoon Express. Welcome to The Loft. Thank you so Thank much for you. having us. Let's get straight into it. I mean, you know, marriage before a little baby girl and marriage after a little baby girl. What has been the change in the, you know, the change of dynamics in your relationship since Kenzie uh, joined you? Well, you know, we were um, Jennifer. And, uh, Jennifer and I were married for about it was about two years mm. uh, before before we had Kenzie. So we actually met in London, wow. and um, and we end up kind of traveling all over the world. Uh, the one time we were in Germany, and then uh, when Jennifer was moving back to South Africa, yeah. we met up in New York, and then she made the long trip to this side. So we've been kind of you know like we've been seasoned travelers, yeah. um, and we did a lot of traveling as well. You know, during our two years um, that we were married. Well, even during the time when we were still going out. Mm. Um, so, so Kenzie kind of put a stop, wow. you know, to that. Um, I guess that's because, you know, the world was no more the focus, but she kind of became the focus. Um, so, so as much as, you know, as much as it's changed our, it's changed our lives, you know, to obviously kind of put the brakes down. Yeah. It's been for the good. Um, I can't imagine life without her. Absolutely. Well, it's easy for him to say because he still <laughs> travels. I'm the one staying at home with little Kenzie. <laughs> but it's something I gladly do, though. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I love about the both of you and your relationship and your marriage is the fact that you've been so open. You've shared the story. I mean, we followed you from the wedding to your relationship to Kenzie to winning the You Spectacular Award. But let's focus on her a little bit. I, f I follow Kenzie on Instagram. The decision. For, I do. I even comment on some of her pictures. The decision to give her her own Instagram page. 
It's, that is my brainchild. Yeah. I, I know I know you do follow because yes. I comment back on TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think it's something nice to for her to look back on. Hopefully Instagram will still be around when she's old enough. Oh, yeah. But it's you know it's it captures memories and little things that she does and it sort of has a history and it's almost like a digital photo album. Oh, so yeah. that's actually why I started it. So if you notice there's a lot of uh, child activities um, and also people she meets and you know that kind oh. of thing. So it's just really for fun. So it's my it's my little um, alter ego. The other day I mean you <laughs> posted a video of her playing piano. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, would you support her getting into music, getting into entertainment industry? Has she shown any interest in wanting to be an artist, a musician, a songwriter? Well, a songwriter, I'd probably say yes, because really? you know the thing is... She has, yes, yeah, she has, weirdly enough. She actually makes up her own little lyrics to no nursery rhymes, for example. Oh, wow! Yeah. She does. And, you know, and also the way that she sings as well, she's actually, you know, she actually sings in tune. So even if I'm singing a song, and because you know I've got a bass, um, yeah. I'd probably sing it, you know, I'd, I'd probably start it in any key, and she would literally sing exactly two octaves above me. So, yeah. so you know, wow. I think anywhere, um, whatever career choice that she, mm. that she, well, that she chooses, um, we'll, we'll definitely, it, yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. like, we'll definitely support it. But yeah. right now, she's also very clever as well, you know? And Jennifer comes from a, from a line of doctors, um, wow. You know, with her dad and her brother. So if she wanted to become that as well, that's also you know, that's fine. Also that's fine. Also, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, talking about careers, both of you work very, very closely, work together actually. Um, is that difficult? Does it put strain on your marriage? Have you found a balance in terms of seeing and communicating with each other every single day? And are you able to kind of break the work away from just having a downtime as husband and wife? Um, it's been difficult. I think yeah. um, you've got several questions there, but it is it is nice because I think if I wasn't working with him, I wouldn't see him. Basically, I wouldn't be his wife if, <laughs> if I wasn't working with him because wow. it would be that... I mean, his schedule is hectic. As, by, as, as hectic as yours, so you can imagine. You need to wow. think about that when you get married. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it, is quite, it is quite taxing, but you have to... Communication is really the key. Uh -huh. yeah. um, whether it's bad communication in that you're arguing or whether it's good communication. So I think... As long as the channels are open to communicate, that's really what keeps us going. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be married to my best friend and work with him. And I really couldn't ask for anything more. That's yeah. amazing. Well, the upside to that is the fact that I don't have to come to and say, listen, um, something <laughs> just came up for work tomorrow. So she I knows to, exactly. She knows it. As a matter of fact, she's going to put it in the diary. <laughs> so, so that kind of works, you know, like that kind of works for me. I love uh, that. You know, so do you think that, you know, had a huge role to play in terms of a chemistry? And I mean, at the Youth Spectacular Awards, let me start there. There was a very <laughs> awkward moment. Jane, you actually had to get on stage alone. I did. Because, Lois, you were backstage. And was to receive the reward. Tell me about that moment. And because obviously none of you had imagined you were no. going to win <laughs> what that night. I, actually, I was lucky enough to have the beautiful Lisa Lurie be my chaperone while he was away. Yeah. Um, he was coming from uh, a gig, but it was actually at a church that he was, he was performing at a church nearby. Wow. And um, he was also performing on the evening at the Youth Spectacular yes. Awards. So I didn't know we were up so early in the evening, that category. So oh. I didn't, for the one minute, even think, first of all, that we we're going to win or that he wouldn't be there when yeah. that happened. So I literally had to go on stage on myself yeah. and accept the award. But he literally made it just in time as I walked off That's for all amazing. the other interviews, yes. You know what, actually, that, that, same, that same evening, mm. I, um, I was up for another seven, seven nominations at another award ceremony called the Santa Gospel Awards. And I thought, you know what, um, because I was speaking to Jen, and Jen is like, listen, you have to come because you're performing. I'm like, but can I also go there as well? Because, I mean, I thought, you know, yeah. I've won you Spectaculars before. The last one I won for was in 2009. And so I thought, yeah, who's still going to vote? for me, mm. you know what I mean, um, after so, so many years. So I must say, it, 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 it was a surprise, you know, um, for us. That's yeah. why I think every single time we did an interview, we didn't know what to say. <laughs> I can't imagine. Because <laughs> we hadn't planned anything to say, but it's really just wonderful to know that uh, people out there, they look at us and they get inspired by the way that we live our lives. So I, I think for that reason alone, we don't mind being, you know, like being open and being and on Instagram yeah. about our relationship and I so on. I love that. And I mean, talking about career, you're now um, going on a US tour with your brothers. Yeah. And I mean, your career keeps growing and expanding in new avenues that you discover. You know, what are you looking forward to, Mercy, um, on that US tour? I'm looking forward to traveling America for, for um, well, uh, you know, for two months in a bus. <laughs> I've always, you know, I think that'll make for you some great... You are traveling in a bus? <laughs> well, it's country. a tour bus, oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a tour bus um, about, you know, about a year ago, we did a... Um, 
we did a, 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 a DVD with Bala Brothers. Yes. Um, that was shown to over 80% of, uh, of America. And wow. just through that, we've really gained, you know, uh, we've really just received just such wonderful support that we can actually literally go for that long. Um, it's going to be also kind of difficult. Um, yes. Because you're not kind of leaving the family behind. But, um, but who knows? Maybe they can... They can come now and then in certain countries. Absolutely. Where we are. Do you know which uh, states you're going to be hitting? And you um, know what it's, it's going to be literally all over, all the way from LA, you know, kind of down Tampa, to the, Florida. you know, Tampa, Florida, mm -hmm. that side, and then Dallas, then all the way to the east, you know, um, hitting obviously New York, Connecticut. Amazing. So it's literally going to be all over America for that those two is months. Yeah. Fantastic. And what are you going to do while he's away? <laughs> Well, you know, sitting here, I was just thinking, you're probably going to miss Kenzie's third birthday, yeah. unfortunately. I mean, yeah. you know, backstage, mm -hmm. I saw you FaceTiming her. Yes. Mm. You know, is it difficult when you're away from her for such a long time, even for a night? Well, this is actually my first night away from her, Aww. literally. He's always been away, and we always FaceTime, so she's, she's very used to that, or we call, or whatever it is, whatever we can do. Um, yeah. And she always knows that daddy's on the phone and Aww, just a phone call yeah. away. She'll even say to him, it's okay, daddy, we'll call you on mommy's phone. Aww, I love <laughs> that. So, but it's my first night away. So I think I'm more terrified than she is. She's with her cousins and my sister's there. Okay. And she's just having a whale of a time. Fantastic. Yeah. She'll probably post it up on Instagram later. <laughs> 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 but the violins are here right in the loft. If you have any questions for them, let us know on Twitter right now. We continue the fun, the conversation right here on our SABC3 on Afternoon Express, straight after the break. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, I heard Claire Winstanley has got bacon and cheese and Sami's, and I'm absolutely excited. So, welcome to the kitchen. Claire, let's Sami's. get started. Sami's? I wasn't going to call it Sami. Let's call it a very posh grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, yes, because Sami is not cool enough for us on Afternoon Express. <laughs> I see okay. bacon and I'm excited. So, you and me are going to get to work here. Cool. What we're going to do first is take this delicious cheese, jalapeno, pe pepperdew, and cheddar. Mm. Slice it up, and while I slice this up, yep. you can start assembling. It really is as simple as a grilled cheese sandwich that you can layer with whatever you want in the middle. Personally, I think bacon, apple, which some people find a little bit strange, yeah, but it goes food. absolutely deliciously together. Really? Promise you, promise you, promise you, you have to I try I suppose it. it is the sweet and the salty that's quite nice, and the and the apple's got a bit of a sour ting to it, so yeah. sorry, so you can I'm go there. wasting so your time. What you want to do okay. is, on the one side, Wait, hang on, jumping the gun here. Totally excited about this bacon. Slow down. <laughs> okay, we're going to butter the one side first. Turn it over like that. Uh -huh. Let me show you one just as a, yeah. a Please demo. show me because when it comes to making uh, sandwiches and putting things, I always just put bacon first. It's just bacon. It's the only ingredient I... Ju and no. just bacon, probably. Just bacon, Bacon exactly. and maybe butter. Bacon in with the top layer of bacon and then you kind of put them together and then you bake and that. And then you bake that. And then you bake bacon. just bake bacon. Okay. Yes. Well, we're going <laughs> to just take it a little bit further than advance it. Okay. okay. Just to make your life simple, mm -hmm. butter it like that, turn it inside out on itself. There oh, we go. So you don't okay. end up with butter smear all over your yes. board or your plates or whatever. See, now go. That's layer. so clever. I like that. So I go with bacon first, right? You can do whatever you want. Okay, amazing. And then go. goat cheese. Fabulously. Okay, Lovely. so now you've kind of messed it up, but it's okay. Well, what did I do? You stack up a bacon <laughs> I know, on first. I did, I okay. did, I did. It's her fault. I know. Okay, we put a little bit of goat cheese on here. bad teacher. Mm. <laughs> Just put a couple of blobs on there. Mm. Goat cheese also goes so fantastically with apple. It really, really, really is a delicious complement to that. Exactly like you said, tangy, slightly tartness yes. of the Granny Smith apples. Okay, so can I put some apple on now? Yes, go for it. And I suppose really the order that you put it on is just for convenience sake. It's to make sure that you just... Um, it's all going to melt and ooze together. That cheese is just going to just combine mm. everything. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, the, the goat cheese kind of acts a little bit like glue. Yes. So okay. that helps a little bit. And goat cheese is apparently a lot more healthier for you than all the other milky-based cheeses, right? Goat's milk is much better for you than other cheese. I'm not a nutritionist, so I'm not okay. going to claim anything. But okay. all cheese is fabulous to me. Fantastic. I Absolutely like you. Absolutely delicious. We'll get along just fine. <laughs> okay, so now so I have to flip it around. So that goes then onto your tray. Okay. And you can just start... Carrying on going on there. see. Okay, so you're gonna have to help me with this because apparently I'm incredibly slow at this. <laughs> a lot of butter because that's what I'm quite good at. The, the cool thing is exactly sort of what we were talking about earlier in terms of um, why well, I was getting so excited about this 
sandwich mm. is that it is a cool weekend brunch idea. You can get yes. the kids involved, sort of set up an assembly line and mm. work your way down. And the one on the end is the pan who gets the going should, on the fry. I should probably call Bonnie and them to come and help us with our assembly line at the <laughs> rate that I'm going with the salmi over here. There you go with that. Sorry. I'm going to pop that on there. And then while you get going in that, I'm going to take this one mm -hmm. over here and actually just get grilling on it. So you have your, your pan. And you mm -hmm. just pop it into a nice hot pan. You can hear that butter Ooh, yes. starting to melt. Yes, and yes, then you just yes. layer them all up. And then it goes back onto that pan. And you cut them in half. And then comes the cool part. But I'm going to save that for later. There's a cool part. One of my favorites. OK, looking forward to this. I'm going to ply these with lots of bacon. I'll put some goat's cheese on these ones and some apple. You guys can also make variations of this. And if you do want to know exactly how Claire did it and why hers tastes so good, you can go and find it on our website, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. The recipe is there for you. But it seems pretty simple to follow. So I hope you guys are cooking along with us right here on Afternoon Express. While we finish this up, we've got Bonnie on the couch with funny man, Lo Fenter. Thank you, Danilo. He is best known for his role as Cornet alongside Rob Van Feeren in Cornet and Twaki, the most amazing show, really. Joining us now is one of South Africa's hardest working writers and actors, appearing in countless productions for almost 15 years, with his latest film, Hollywood in May Hayes, releasing in cinemas today. It's Lo Fenter. Welcome to the loft. Very good. Yes. I'm very impressed. <laughs> thank you. You make me sound so good. But you are amazing. Well, thank you. Uh, but the movie is amazing. Yes. Well, we'll talk about and that in a short movie. while. I'm just an actor. You're just an actor mm. in it. We'll chat about that in a mm. little bit. But we first met you in Cornet and Twaki. Well, mm. you became very well known for that. Mm -hmm. What have the characters been up to? We haven't seen them in a while. Uh, Twaki started a pig farm in Bronkorspreit, <laughs> which he runs. Um, they've had a couple of disasters. And Cornet is currently stuck on an island off Paternoster. Oh, After that's a, he, uh, he was on a, a Greek uh, what you, a passenger liner uh, that sank, and apparently he's been out there. It's really not a bad place to get stuck in. It's really beautiful out there. Well, if you've got food and the like, but yeah, apparently he's living off sacred ibises and seagulls. <laughs> so it's not particularly good. But uh, no, I mean, we did Korda for uh, 10, years, 10 years. Ten years. Well, 10 years plus, and. Um, it was time to. It was time to, to do some move other on. things. We, yes. we bring them out of the closet and bring, you know, slap out the old yeah. moustaches every now and then for charity. But it's. Um, yeah. Speaking of Cornet, mm. there's a funny story involving him in a funeral. Do you share? Who told you this story? <laughs> yeah. So we. Um, <laughs> this did actually happen. We. Mm -hmm. um, we had a corporate function for an IT company at the Cape Royal Yacht Club. All right. Um, and, and the idea was always that Cornet and Twaki would always be in character. So we'd get into character and makeup um, and various prostheses um, <laughs> before a show. And we, we arrived at this venue in character and started working the room. And it was a very difficult crowd. They, they seemed oh, very depressed they? and aggressive and so on. And, and we sort of split up working the room and uh -huh. we met up at the back and there was this guy in a black dress and I was checking my makeup in the reflection on of in course, his bald as head. One does, yes. And Twaki said, I need to talk to you. And I was like, I can't, I'm busy polishing the Dermony. And he said, no, really. So I bent down because he's really short and I said, what's the story? And he said, this is a funeral. <sighs> so we just ran away. And yeah. then we went to the IT function, which wasn't much better. So we told them we'll go back to the that funeral. Is, that is perfect. That's exactly what I would have done. Yeah. I mean, you can't <laughs> apologize for something like that. You no, just, it's You done. just leave. It's a mess. It's a hot mess. But apparently the guy whose wake it was was a very cool old guy and had a great sense of humor. And apparently they tell me he would have loved it. <laughs> awesome. So I rest awesome. assured in the knowledge. <laughs> now, you've had an interesting career journey in that you started out as an illustrator, graphic designer, and you've now emerged as an actor and writer, eventually. Yeah, I've done a lot of things. I've done Was it a natural progression? Yeah, I've always kind of felt like I was doing the same thing in a, in a strange way, like... Um, it's really all about storytelling. Yes, When I yes. was a copywriter in advertising, I was interested in storytelling. When I was a cartoon artist, I was interested in stories and characters and uh, the book design and all sorts of stuff. What's very interesting about it is, I mean, I did a stint in photography and in music, all sorts of places. And 
all of those disciplines really end up in one place, yes. and that is full. You know what I mean? So it's amazing? always been kind of part of the same thing, and I've, I've started to get into directing now, and this last 20 years of doing all these various things are proving to be super useful, you know? I mean, yeah. film is really, it's all of those things. It's music, And of it's course, photography. having this host of, of experience, does this mean you basically don't need to hire anyone else when you make a film? You can just do all the jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not well, quite. Yeah, well, yeah, Interestingly maybe. enough, I made a movie, well, I was in a movie about two years ago uh, by a brilliant director called Jenna Bass. She mm -hmm. made a movie called Love the One You Love. That one. Jenna, I know Jenna. Do you know Jenna? I worked with Jenna. She directed okay. me in a, in a okay. series. So she's you know, amazing. She's brilliant. She is. She that is. movie won at Diff, Best Film, Best Director, yes. Best Actress the, the for Chi Mende. Yes. And she literally did that. She did makeup, she did wardrobe, she wow. filmed it, she directed, she oversaw the edit. She was like, so it is possible, but, but I'm not Jenna, Jenna Bass. That's Jenna, though. She's, she's just freaking amazing. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> But she's amazing, and I, th I think that's someone to watch out for. Yeah, definitely. She's going to be doing things yeah. for South African film that... I love being directed by her. You're definitely a great writer. I mean, one of your screenplays has just been selected mm -hmm. for Cannes. Can you tell that us about that? was amazing. I've been working on this wow. um, uh, screenplay for the last seven years or so. Um, seven years! <laughs> yeah. oh, what a labour of love. Well, it is. I mean, I, I, I love it, and, and it's a very difficult movie. It's quite complex and, and quite dark, and, mm. and so on. And I honestly just did it because I'm interested in the idea. And then I showed it to a, a producer friend of mine, John Trengrove, who's also... I went to school with John Trengrove. We were in the same the class. Cuts. Yes! No! Stop yourself! Stop it! <laughs> I know all these amazing people. Yeah. So, you know, John is amazing. <laughs> yes, so I gave the script is. to John. I said, why don't you have a look at this? Just tell me what you think. And he, he phoned me like a week later and said, we want to option this thing. Him and his partner, Elias, oh, for, for wow. Rookie Media. And a year and a half later, I got selected for Khan, which was... Well done, you. Amazing. It's an amazing world out there, you know. Before we run out of time, let's quickly talk about mm. Hollywood in May, oh, okay. which opens today. Yeah. Yes, who should go and see this film? Um, I don't like it when people say everyone. Yeah, because not everyone like, should not everyone likes Well, not my everything. four and five-year-old... Kids, no. no, yeah. But I mean, like, if you're a, a, a sort of high school age, late primary school age up, will really enjoy this film. It's um, it's an Afrikaans, but with yeah, English subtitles, it's got a fantastic soundtrack. But it's a funny movie, it's a comedy, and it's about a girl basically, you know, in the, the run up to her matric farewell. But um, it's a very quirky movie, it's super. <laughs> Beautifully made. Oh wow! It's really funny and it's got a really strong uh, heart to it, you know. And it's really b brilliantly filmed. The director Cornet. <laughs> and there are subtitles, obviously. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, I'm gonna so the director is a guy called Cornet van Rooyen, and he's been working on this film for nine years. Um, nine years. And there's wow. so much of his soul and his own life in the film. It must be beautiful. It's really a great film, yeah, and this is so amazing to, to watch a comedy. That's fun, entertaining, and, and pacey, and, and so on, and at the same time, be moved. You know what I mean? Because yes, there are some yes. slightly deeper themes to the movie that are really amazing, and I think it's a fantastic movie for families to watch together because there are issues around conflict and family and the way people see themselves that get resolved through the story, and it, it, it kind of catches you unaware, you know? That Sounds like my kind of story. I can't it wait is. to see it. it yes, is. yes, yes. But don't go away because we okay. love to feed our guests. Okay. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> After the break, we show you how to take care of your precious jewelry and share some great tips for your kid's next birthday party. Don't go away. South Africa, are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express here on SABC3. Well, they say diamonds are a girl's best friend and never has a truer word been spoken. Now we look at beautiful on-trend designs for wedding bands and we also learn how to maintain and take care of jewellery, ensuring that they last us a lifetime. And to give us more tips on how to take care of your jewellery, here's Janina Kritzer from Uwe Kutter Jewellers. Welcome to The Loft. 
Thanks so much, Bonnie. It's Lovely being to have here. You. Yes, thank you. Oh my gosh, these are gorgeous. My favorite topic, every girl's favorite topic. Oh yes, they don't date, I'll tell you that much, even working with them. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the latest trends in engagement and wedding bands? The current trends at the moment are the comeback of rose gold, or is the comeback of rose gold. Um, you'll see oh, much of rose gold was worn in the 1920s. It's come back again. You think of the fob chains back then. Today we have exactly the same. If you'd like to have a look at this one here, this mm -hmm. is uh, rose gold with diamonds. Very, very popular. It's beautiful. Another trend is um, are the coloured gemstones. You'll find a lot of celebrities, uh, for example, this one strikes. Uh, Kate Middleton has a sapphire in her engagement wow, ring. Wow. Halle Berry has an emerald. And that's tanzanite. That's tanzanite, yeah, that's right. Wow. Um, but generally just coloured gemstones are becoming increasingly popular. Um, not necessarily substituting diamonds, mm -hmm. but uh, being in combination with them. Okay. And then of course we've got our floral trend, which is very big at the moment. A lot of attention to detail, a lot of filigree, um, small shapes, flowers, leaves. You'll be able to pick it up on the individual pieces. Um, pretty much a little garden in a ring, if you can put it that way. <laughs> pretty. <laughs> Has the trend of 3D printing infiltrated the jewellery industry? Very much so. You'll see this, for example, is a print of a 3D printer. Yes. It is a very, very cost effective, uh, effective way for jewelers to produce manufac and manufacture jewelry. What is nice for the client, if they have something in mind that they'd like to have designed, mm -hmm. instead of sketching it on 2D or right. sketching it for them, mm -hmm. the 3D allows them to see it from all sides. And yes. they can even once printed, try it on and say, mm, this is not quite what I had in mind. And modified. And we modified and reprinted. And how best can we clean our jewelry and make sure that it lasts us a while? Well, well, the oldest wives tale, not sure how much it is still used today, is I remember my grandmother saying to me, peel a potato, uh -huh. use the potato peel, put it into some water and drop your silver jewellery into that. Oh, wow. Soak it and you'll have clean jewellery. However... And does it work? It does. Oh, it does. Incredible. <laughs> we don't use it though in store. Um, the best recommendation would be actually to go to a jeweler, have your jewellery cleaned. Mm -hmm. um, there, you cannot do it with silver, however, with gold, platinum, white gold, yellow gold, rose gold, we have a ultrasonic machine, which is a little bath, mm -hmm. and essentially your jewellery gets popped in there, um, there's ammonia in the water and you have vibrations which take out the dirt particles of the jewellery. Yes. You cannot pop all sorts of jewellery into that, especially not tanzanites and the softer stones. Soft stone. So you would use, you could, of course, any precious metal barring silver um, and diamonds, sapphires and rubies can go no problem. Right. And then, of course, you've got your home method of how one can do it in the kitchen and it costs mm -hmm. next to nothing. What you do is you take um, a little bit of water with dishwashing liquid. Okay. You pop your jewellery um, into it. You soak it for about 15 minutes. If you find that your jewellery has got grooves and you really want to get rid of those dust particles and dirt particles, you just grab a kitty's toothbrush okay. with very soft bristles and you just gently, gently... What about people who wash dishes with their jewellery on every day? I mean, is that harmful for jewellery? Ideally. You shouldn't. No. Ideally, mm. take your jewellery off, especially if the chemicals are very strong, yes. um, the precious metals will erode. So that oh. is not necessarily recommended. So ideally, taking them off. However, with caution, if you don't, if you put them under the sink, it can so quickly go down the drain. Oh, so yes. that's one thing oh, to yeah. consider. It happens yeah. so Murphy's often. Law. It yeah. does. Yeah. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and when it comes to gemstones and precious stones like diamonds, are there any specific cleaning methods that we can use? Again, a toothbrush always works very well, yeah. but one needs to emphasize it's got to be very, very soft because you don't want to tarnish um, the jewelry. Yes. Alternatively, what uh, you can also do is take an um, earbud. You dunk it again in a little bit of water, mm -hmm. and a little bit of soap will do, and you go around the stones and actually ensure that you clean them in that way. And then, of course, one thing which is probably the most important is to secure your stones, just to mm. make sure that they actually are tight in their setting and that they're oh, not wow. loose. And you and can do that at a jewelly you can, store from once time, you've, from time you can, to time. Yes, you can do it yourself, or you can take them to a jewelly store mm -hmm. or have them set mm -hmm. there or tightened there. Awesome. And any just general 
do's and don'ts about making sure that our jewelry doesn't get damaged? You've just touched on the one. One of the do's is take off your jewelry yeah. when washing yeah. dishes, for example, or when gardening. You very often hit hard surfaces, yes. and that's something you want to try and avoid. Um, it, stones do can crack, uh, especially your softer stones, your tanzanite and the likes. So that's something you try, want to try and avoid. Again, jewellery one wouldn't think, but it's temperature sensitive. So ideally, if you're planning on swimming, tanning, summer, in and out of the pool, take the jewellery off. And then of course showering, similar as to the hand washing, shampoos, conditioners and the likes. It is better to just put it off for a couple of you know yes. minutes. And then, um, yes, the sink. That's one thing that happens. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and yeah, not to take it off in public places. It happens so yes. often. One, one gets into the habit of taking off one's jewelry and washing their hands, and one forgets I've it. I've heard many a sad stories about lost wedding rings, of course. Yes, so have I. Yeah. So that's probably yeah. not the wisest thing to do. No. But thank you so much for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. So there you have it. Some great tips on how to protect your precious jewelry. But for now, let's join Danilo and see what he has up his sleeve. Throwing your child's birthday party into the mix and any parent knows that the mess together with the stress can be completely overwhelming. Today we have Avanette Del Carmen in the lot from Whimsical Parties, arguably the experts in throwing your kids' parties, to give us some tips and tricks on how to maneuver your way through it all. So now, Avanette, when I was a youngster, obviously as boys, my brother and I just used to have outdoor parties. We used to be in tents and be in outdoors, and I suppose that was our theme. But how do you start planning a children's birthday party? Well, the first thing I do in any party or any event is always find a theme and find a way of making it different. Mm. Finding ways to make it unique, to make it special, because nobody wants a party that you just went to a few yes. weeks ago. Mm. So just making a little bit different yeah. in any kind of And way. choosing themes is so hard. Everything is the easiest part about starting a party. It really isn't. Choosing a theme is incredibly, incredibly hard. But you guys are the experts at whimsical parties. Uh, you guys did a really cool theme recently of uh, Greased Lightning. Oh, yeah, the Greased Lightning. Everyone wants some summer loving, especially in winter. <laughs> yes, and... tell me about this. We all do. <laughs> It was so much fun. We yeah. found a diner. So obviously finding a diner, you have most of what you need already. And oh. you just bring in a few extra things like a giant milkshake balloon. Mm -hmm. um, corn backdrops. dogs, I saw. Oh, yes, corn mm. dogs, hot dogs, milkshakes and you have a Grease Lightning themed party. Oh, it's so cool. But the thing with throwing birthday parties, that I know my parents used to complain about this all the time, yeah. was the mess that comes with trying to create one. Is that a big thing? Oh, well, I mean, the best thing to do is just clean as you go. If you okay. clean as you go, no one would even know uh -huh. that your party had any mess. Oof. And at the end of it, you know, no one has to help clean up. For many years, done. my mom used to tell me to make sure I clean as I go. And it's a rule that I don't think I've ever stuck to my life. But it is yeah, absolutely wise advice. So thank you for sharing that. I see some pink goodness in front of us there, so I'm guessing this is not for my birthday party. I take it. <laughs> well, being a girl, mm -hmm. I obviously tend to go for the pretty, pretty pink stuff. And the girls love to dress up and they like to put the little dresses on and get so absolutely cute. So it is. tell us what we've got here today. Okay, well, with advice with the candy table, to make any candy table pop, you want to choose a color palette to match your theme. Mm -hmm. So with my candy table, I went for a bit of a vintage pink style and obviously went for a few shades of pinks and whites. Yes. So when planning any candy table, you want to create height and depth. Okay. So whether you're putting your glass jars on books, vintage books, mm -hmm. or cake stands, it's a way to make your table feel very grand. And I love that you guys have got these little milkshakes and almost like the vintage milk cartons. I dig I it so much. And a great little tip and trick is Taking topics, actually, and, oh, and cool. just drawing on a bit of a... Have a look at that. So you can style spray. something with Tipex on the outside of glass, and it stays, and it can be actually look really cool. Not with my handwriting, though, so make sure my mom's not watching, because <laughs> my handwriting is apparently horrendous, so I will not design anything on my glasses. Oh, well, definitely, if, if you're a bit of a creative, then, mm. you know. You can trust yourself at Tipex. Thank you. Some trips, uh, tips and trends in terms of birthday parties going into this new year. Any kind of themes that parents can like latch on to? Because I went to even Googled uh, children's birthday party themes and they all seem to be the same. Any kind of tips and tricks from the expert? I normally just hit the internet. Okay. See what hasn't been done and go that way. Okay. And I see like you, what I like about what you've done is you've chosen a color, which is so simple to go with. You can really create anything from that. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Avanette, thank you so much for joining us in the loft, and I'm so excited to tuck into some of these goodies. I like sweets. Can I steal a Go marshmallow? For it. Yeah. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Well, I eat my marshmallow. You guys can take a short ad break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's the weekend and myself and Claire are busy preparing these really cool toasted salamis that I call them in the kitchen here today. I see you've already put them on the grill and they've got nice and toasted and there's the big surprise she's been mentioning. What is the surprise? Okay, so the big surprise is, you know, Saturday morning, relaxing, mm -hmm. making breakfast, French toast. Every day of the week, not Delicious. Saturday mornings. Now what we're going to do is mm. take these grilled cheese sandwiches and French toastify them. Oh, lovely. Yes. Awesome. So we're going to make the, what, the custard Base. So effectively okay. a custard is the same thing you'd make for any French toast as mm. eggs, some sort of milk or cream, and you dip that into it. What we're going to do, what you're yes. going to do, is stack and pack stack, all stack, of stack. our grilled cheese sarmies, as Thank you. we call them. Yeah, let's Jeez, change the name. name. I like it. I like it. I grew up well, calling them that. So now as I'm long as they stand up, right? Yes, yeah, stand up. So kind of messy. The reason we do this is so that when you put it in the oven, all that exposed toast is going to get all nice and crunchy and crispy as it sort of mm. bakes up in the oven. Okay, oh, so while you do that, we've got four eggs. Just give that, pop them into whatever sort of beaker or bowl you want and just give them a mix up first. Okay. I want to see eggs, whites and yolks. This is, this is fancy whisking over here, right? Here. <laughs> <laughs> I like this technique actually. It's something new. I've never seen that happen before. It's called, it's called the, I don't know. The twisk. <laughs> the twisk. twisk. Hey, it works. I like it. It could be a dance move. Check out, guys, put some cheese around. Yeah, yeah go for it. So, cheese, all the more nice the merrier. Hey? In there. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, then in goes the cream. That's all that velvety, delicious richness that's going to come into play there. Oof. Give that a little bit of a mix up. Do you want to go on the milk? Yes. I don't in know there. if that's into here. I don't know if that's all going to fit, but let's try. Yeah. Oh. Make a mess, no problem. Okay. Yeah, you my type of chef. So it's probably about a cup of milk and a half a cup of cream. Again, I'm just doing this. It, I mean, it really just suits the speaker. It's really because your bowl is just too small and you're trying to make an excuse to say, I've got this really cool technique it's of in, whisking. It's incredibly effective. But actually, you should use a bowl. <laughs> actually. <laughs> Making use of what I'm going to do here. Okay. <laughs> and then in goes some black pepper. Okay. Okay, and then we just slowly pour that in. Over, Oof. you want to aim for the toasted cheese sandwiches. Yes, to get the bread to soak it up. To soak it up, exactly like I said, like your French toast. And Oof, just... Yum. I feel so, on, I, on, I get on. so into it that I start staring at the pieces and I start drooling out. So I was like, ah. Oh, okay, so now... So cool. I know, doesn't it? Mm. And then what's going to happen now is it goes into the oven, probably about 180 degrees. Yes. Until the egg sets. And Nothing. that's really it. And then, like I said, the, the toast just starts to... Get all nice and crunchy and crispy, and that's it. Oh, lovely. And the bottom stuff, does it remain kind of thick? Like I said, oh, it's going to set up like amazing. a custard. Oh, that's amazing. Really it. It's almost like a scoop little bits out of it, like a dip in itself. Mm, those look so delicious. If you want to cook along with us right here on Afternoon Express and you want this recipe, www.afternoonexpress.co.za, there you will find the shopping list as well as the recipe itself. These are an awesome dish to make on any sort of long weekend. Right now, though, the ladies are standing by on the couch with our awesome guests. If, like me, you're a parent, it's holiday time oh, and you're very excited, but yes. at the same time, you're a bit anxious because you don't know what to do with the kids. Well, look no further because we've got some great ideas of events happening all around the country. Guys, do you have great plans for the holidays for the kids? Oh, um, yeah. I was exactly, she, she's still living with us. She started going to school. <laughs> so, um, so for us, when it's school holidays, uh, we work better because there's less traffic in Joburg. Yes. And, um, and we don't go on holidays because holidays are expensive around that time. So we go on holidays when your children go to school. Oh, <laughs> well, the thing is, we live in Cape Town, so we are on holiday. <laughs> A beautiful, beautiful <laughs> province. You know, what are some uh, what are some of the things you do with your well, kids? Uh, you know, during school holidays. I live in Clavelli, so uh -huh. we have a wetland where we walk. We oh. have the beach where we swim. We have the oh mountain gosh. where we climb. And nah, then nah, 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 nah. in the wetland. Yeah, no, it's Plenty. a bit amazing. Oh, yes. I mean, that's why I moved there, and I don't have to get up early because <laughs> I always take them to school. So they're on holiday, oh I'm on gosh. holiday. That's I'm an awesome. actor, so I hardly work at all. You know? Incredible. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm not the best planner, not the most organized. Yeah. So when holidays hit me, every day I'm like, oh, what are we doing today? Yeah. So I'm really excited that there's all this great stuff happening Absolutely. in Cape Town. And, and if Joburg. you are in Cape Town or Joburg, the children's mini drama in Cape Town, there's a festival at the Arscape Theatre, the Arscape Theatre foyer, from Friday, the 26th of June, which is today. More adventures of Noddy and Fantastic Mr. Fox form part of a mini drama festival hosted by Stagecraft Drama Studio with multiple showings throughout the winter break. Noddy will be showing from Friday the 26th until Friday the 10th of July and Fantastic Mr. Fox will be on Monday.
Monday the 6th of July until Saturday the 18th of July. I'll definitely be taking my kids Sounds to that. Sounds fantastic. And in Joburg, the National Children's Theatre in Parktown is showcasing the adventures of Oliver Twist starting from the 8th of June till the 19th of July. Also this weekend the 27th of June. They're hosting an Oliver Twist scavenger hunt at 12 noon. The cost is Imagine 60 that. rand per entry. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're going to be going. But uh, I want to know what are some of Kenzie's favorite things to do. I mean, following on Twitter, I know she loves swinging. She loves going to, you know, festivals. She loves meeting celebrity moms and dads. <laughs> but in her own personal space, what does she yeah. love? She, she could bounce on the trampoline any time of the day. Ah, she She'll literally lucky. bounce in her PJs <laughs> before bath time, before sleep time, before eating. She, she loves the trampoline. That's one of her big... A big one. So. All right. You know, one thing I hope for Kenzie is that she doesn't have memes made out of her like the Kardashian little girl. Oh, yes. <laughs> Penelope. 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 <laughs> I mean, Bonnie, you have, to, you have sons, right? I what do. are some of the I've things you, you know, you're going to be getting up to for the winter? Do you know break? what? My boy, boys were so simple. Mm -hmm. they, they love to put on their gumboots, yeah. their Wellingtons, and jump in muddy puddles. And yeah, they love maybe they can playing by flow. the river. <laughs> they, love, they love catching tadpoles. And they just, they love playing for okay. hours. You don't even have to impress them that much. But it just has to be safe. Okay. And it has to be... Um, safe, but you say they're boys. <laughs> but uh, but no, do you, are you like Bonnie, are you not a planner? Do you just allow them to just go with the flow? Yeah, I mean, my kids are a little bit older. They're okay. 12 and 9. So my, sure. my son just play, plays with other boys and they destroy things. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my daughter is amazing. She makes things. She's made a wow. campaign oh, to wow. save bees and she makes wow. posters and she writes books. And it looks like she should be in the show. She should. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> While you make that call, though, Fridays are not going to be the same to get you in the mood for the weekend. Revlon are launching hashtag Foundation Fridays right here on Afternoon Express, sharing makeup tips from the best to turn love on. Plus, there are fabulous hampers up for grabs every single week. You can also get 50 Rand of SA's number one foundation just by purchasing Revlon Color Stay Foundation between the months of June and July at any leading retailer and pharmacy store nationwide. So, ladies, trust me, you do not want to miss out. But wait, there's more. We want to share the love a little bit more. So if you and your plus one, maybe your bestie or your lover, want to experience 24 hours in my life, hang out here on set with Bonnie mm -hmm. and Jeannie, enjoying the city life and turning love on. Whether you're in love or looking for love, just take a pic of you and your Color Stay Foundation. All right, take a selfie, tweet, hashtag Foundation Fridays and hashtag love is on. And we could be meeting up right here in the Loft. I'd really love to meet you. I'd really want you to meet Bonnie and see how crazy she is in real life. So get <laughs> tweeting. Don't miss the hashtag. Hashtag Foundation Fridays. More coming up after the break. Talking about crazy, don't you have a plane to catch to LA? I do. I actually do. I'm going to LA. Lord, it was yes. lovely to meet you. The bar mm. is lovely to meet you. Yes. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the show. Danilo, everybody. I won't be back after the break, but yeah. We I'll see you in Los Angeles. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. And if you're wondering what that incredible smell coming from your television is, it's our toasties. They've just come out of the oven, Claire. They look incredibly toasted and crunchy on the outside, and the bottom looks like it's set. Cheese is melted, the bacon is still crisp and delicious mm, in there. Mm, mm. The apple will have cooked just a little bit to add a little yum, bit yum, of yum. sweetness to the dish, and exactly that. The egg is cooked. Perfection. The apple doesn't fall too far away from the tree. Okay, so it's hot, you're hot. Okay, that's how it works. Okay, <laughs> let's take this to the table now while it's still warm, because I don't want our guests to get cold yeah, food or in. cold feet and leave us. <laughs> Awkward. Okay, <laughs> let's put this down over here. Mm. Looks good, hey guys. How good does that look? Wow. Sorry, I just have to show you first. Oh, wow. Incredible, oh, wow. incredible, oh, wow. incredible, little toasty. Oh, wow. <clears throat> just now. Because first, we have a performance to get to. Ah. Wow, those look so decadent. I can't wait to taste it. Mm. So, Louis, so you're about to perform a song from a campaign that you're busy with, a million likes. Please tell us about it. Um, one of the um, one of the of the um, of the of, of the charities that I support, yes. called Africa Tukun, uh, they've started a wonderful initiative uh, to try and take five thousand kids to school. But how it works is that um, they have a post on their Facebook page 
called Like Change. And if we get a million people to like that, we'll literally help children from cradle to career, which means uh, through the uh, you know through their time um, as as young children wow. and through school up until the time that they um, that they get a career. So the song is called A Million Likes. I'm singing for my supper now. Oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and to get a million likes as well. <laughs> well, it sounds like an incredible campaign. Well, the moment we've all been waiting for. One of my favorite musicians live here in the loft, Louis Sopala. Enjoy. Let's do this. are young with so many years to live We need a choice with the help we know We'll get all we need A chance to win, yay In your power you can change the world Like my starfish into the ocean You'll birth in us A bright new star Cause it's all up to you To save our future all Internet trend around the world See every town and every city In unity Building destinies For rich child deserves a chance to win Let's make a point to make it better Give what you can earned your dinner tonight. I could feel like that was from a musical. I feel like a Disney needs to pick that up. Seriously? Eh? <laughs> totally. Yes. And they should. And of course, do the right thing and, yeah, like, like the page, like right? Yes. yes. Awesome. I know this is a messy meal to eat, everybody, so just take it with your hands. Do not Dig be shy. In. Claire's got it 100% right. I'm in there. If, if you want your dessert first, you're more than welcome to do that too. But tell me okay. how it tastes. Luiso, I'm very excited to have you in the studio because some of you might not know this, but this man and I shared a school together. You, yes. I was in like grade two or grade three yes. when you finished matric or something. I'm giving away my age here, but <laughs> how cool that we shared a school and you're doing so well with you. Know, and not only you, but also Jonathan, Jonathan Boynton. Mm. I was actually in his year. I don't which is know amazing. this. So we've got two, you know, we've got two presenters, you know. They seem to and, be uh, from the school. Yeah, wow. what happened to me? I should have been a presenter as well. Mm. I think Mr. Coy, maybe you can come join us on the yeah. yeah, There's exactly. still time. Exactly, I should do that. There's three girls, one boy. What about adding another boy and then another boy? And then we have even. Full house. You see? See? <laughs> so how does it taste? No one's eating my food. Yes. What did I do? Oh, wrong? I'm it's delicious. How does it, it taste? Very nice. There's the sour thing and the uh, sweet and the salt uh, thing. Uh, <laughs> I'll spoon oh, you, eh? Oh, wait. Promises, promises. Okay, it's delicious. <laughs> I would comment, but I've got a mouthful. It's, it's All right. delicious. Thank you for joining us, guys. We've loved mm. having you. I what a the cool bacon. bunch of people around our table today. Really, really so. And Bonang, we miss you so much. We know you're on a flight on the way to the United States of America, but I've saved you a portion. It is delicious. It's here for you when you get back. Yes, and we've absolutely loved having you join us there at home. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place. Good night and happy eating. Have a good weekend. We won't see you tomorrow. See you on Monday. Yes.
Coming up next week, as always on Afternoon Express, we bring you celebrities from our loft to your living room. We take a look at the complications of living with ADHD, we have a look at some unique style leading up to the Durban July, and we chat about the importance of entrepreneurship in our youth. Another feel good production. Join us next time for more fabulous fun inspired by First for Women on Afternoon Express. For an insurance quote, call 0861 11 or SMS FIRST to 49267.